Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. Happy and healthy New Year to everyone. We started a Facebook group called Ask the Lawyer. It's a New York City FAQ group about injury law, all about personal injury, all about your questions. So I'm gonna drop the link to join in the uh, description. Just click the link, join, it's free. You could ask any question. You can post you know, videos, interactions. We could do uh, rooms in there, whatever, whatever Facebook offers. So it's pretty cool. And one person already asked a question. It was from Sean and he said, why do some law firms promise more for the same accident than others? And do they know something other lawyers don't? So I thought that was a really uh, good question. So kudos to Sean for asking this incisive, interesting question. And to answer it, you know, why do some law firms promise more money for the same accident, for the same injury than others? So let's look at that question. So number one, if you as a client get into an accident, let's say a car crash or a trip and fall, and you call a bunch of different lawyers and you tell them what happened to you, you may hear different answers. Some lawyers may say, we don't know what it's worth because we don't know what your injury is. We don't know what it's worth because we don't know what the liability is. We have to see if we can prove certain things, uh, were, there, were there witnesses, um, you know, things like that. And the other thing is that a lot of these lawyers are going to be trying to sell you. If they think that you have a good case, they're gonna sell you, they're gonna do marketing. Because you have to also ask yourself, who am I speaking to, right? Am I speaking to the trial attorney who's gonna try my case in court? Or am I speaking to an outside call center that's not even part of the law firm? Am I speaking to a receptionist in the law firm who has no idea about personal injury value? Am I speaking to a paralegal who may have a little bit better idea, but nowhere as high as what an attorney would know, right? And then it really just fluctuates because it's, it's based upon the personality of that attorney, right? Some attorneys just get better results. Some attorneys are more experienced. They're better lawyers. They have, you could look at their uh, verdicts and settlements and you could look at their records, right? Some firms are mills and they just take a bunch of cases and they just settle them. And that's how they make their money and they'll never go to court. Some firms don't have the resources to go to court because a case may be worth 2 million, but the insurance company will call them and offer them 400,000. And they'll need that 400,000 to make payroll, right? Or to whatever, because there's a pandemic, maybe they're not doing as well financially. They'll just take the 400,000. They'll tell you it's a good number. It is a good number, but in a year, you could have had 2 million or maybe more, right? So there's so many variables, but in general, I think that with small cases, if you have a little fender bender and you call someone, a lot of lawyers will just say no, because then they just don't wanna deal with fender benders. But some lawyers may say yes. So if you get a yes on a fender bender, go for it because it's just hard to find a lawyer, you know, because it's a bad case. Um, if it's a big case, you're going to be promised, you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So just be very, very wary and mindful if it's a big case. And um, so, yeah, so that's basically it. And then the second part of the question was, do they know something other lawyers don't? And um, well, obviously, we talked about having experience being a trial lawyer. And I think it's also very important that you find the right firm for you because some firms are gonna be smaller and they're gonna give you that personal experience where you can get on the phone with somebody, you could text with the lawyer, like I text my clients all the time. You could get into maybe one of these CRMs or community boards, or like we have like this Facebook group where you could communicate with the lawyer. Um, other lawyers are more like, you know, regimented and they're more like old school where you call, you get like a status update and that's it. They turn off the spigot, right? You, you can't get any information and that's bad. And then the other thing is, is the lawyer willing to come to like a client's house, right? Break bread with the client, learn about the client, learn about who they were as a child, check their photo albums. Like we do all this on the big, on the big cases. We have to, right? Because that's telling the client's human story. And if the lawyer is not willing to do that, if they're just like submitting medical bills and trying to get, of course, they're gonna get much less money. That just, it just goes without saying. So those are the issues. And then the final question that he asked, this is all like one post, but he asked a lot of questions. He asked, why is it important to retain a lawyer and not try to settle yourself? And settling yourself is just, you know, in my opinion, it's like doing surgery on yourself if you have a bad injury. Like for example, if you have a bad stomach tumor, you're not going to do surgery on yourself, right? And settling a case yourself is the same thing. 
uh, legally as that would be medically. So it's just crazy. Don't, don't do it. Unless you have like, okay, if you add into a little fender bender, you have no injury, you're sure you have nothing. You just have like, you want to get like $200 for the scratch on your bumper. Sure. Go ahead. Settle it yourself. But otherwise it's just crazy. And I'll give you an example. I had a client, really nice guy out in Long Island. He got hit and it was a big insurance company. I don't want to say who, but one of these like progressive state farm, all state, they came to his house. He didn't have a lawyer at this time. He got hit by a car. He had a hip injury. And they said, look, you got a hip injury. It's a little boo-boo. Here's 500 bucks. He was going to take it. They had the release. He had it. He showed me the release. And he, it said 500 bucks. On. He was going to sign it. He was going to get the 500 bucks. But he called me. I came to his house. I talked to him. He ended up retaining me. You know how much money we got for him? Half a million dollars. Not $500. $500,000. And that's the drastic difference between settling it yourself and settling it with a qualified attorney. So I hope this helps. Drop a comment, ask me some questions. I'm also on Clubhouse at, at Injury Law. That's a great app, by the way, Clubhouse. A lot of, of great discussions about marketing, meditation, everything, growth. So have a great new year. Happy and healthy to everyone. And join our Facebook group and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day, everyone. And bye-bye.